Hello, hello, hello. Today is Thursday, January 25, 2024. Solutions to the easy capacitor problem 190. There were about 12 correct answers. I could have chosen almost anyone else's answers, but M. Dorgan adds a few things that not everyone covers, and that was the reason why I chose him. Initially, the capacitor C2, 2 microfarad, and C3, 3 microfarad, are not part of the closed circuit. Thus, they will remain uncharged. So their potential difference across each of them will be zero. In the case of the capacitor C1, one microfarad, when it becomes fully charged, it will hold charge Q1, which is C1 times V, where V is 24 volts. So we can now answer the first part of the problem. I'm unaware that there was a first part, but that is perfectly fine. So, as the picture is now, switch was not thrown yet, you see here the answers for Q1 and for V1, for Q2 and for V2 and for Q3 and for V3. When the switch flips, the capacitor C1 is put into contact with the two capacitors which have no charge on them. That is C2 and C3. The charge, which was on C1, which we'll denote as Q, is 24 microcoulomb. It will redistribute such that the potential difference between the plates of C1 will equal the potential difference, which he calls V prime, between the two in series capacitors, which combined have a total capacitance 1 over C23 is 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Because the capacitors C2 and C3 are in series, they will hold the same amount of charge, which we will denote as Q23. So we can say that the charge Q23 is C23 times V prime, and the charge Q1, C1 times V prime, but as Set above, Q is Q1 plus Q23. Letting us to conclude that Q is V prime times C1 plus C23. We can quickly sort out the value of C23. You can track this and you find then that C23 is 1.2 microfarad, which helps us to evaluate V prime, which then is 10.91 volts. So now we have all the ingredients to answer the second part of the problem, which I still believe was the only part of the problem. And here you see the answers. I will leave you with the answers just to look at them. No need for me to read them again. So take some time and read them. He does an interesting sanity check. 
namely that V2 plus V3 must be 10.91 volts. He mentioned it is important to understand the way the capacitors are polarized. So anywhere you install a voltmeter, the measurements are consistent. So all capacitors, C1, C2 and C3, have the upper plate positive, polarized, and the bottom plate, plate negatively polarized. It was a very easy problem. Class 11, class 12. Bridget told me that he is working on his own video. And as soon as I have received his, I will also post that. All of this, of course, is covered in great detail in my 802 lectures. If you didn't want to spend the time to view those lectures, that's your problem, not my problem. You have the right to not learn new physics. That goes without saying, and of course you will still be my friends. That's always a given.